Maybe I can show you the picture of the cross. I did post it on Facebook, but not everybody on my um, channel goes to Facebook. So, Oh, wait till y'all see the video that I'm going to post tomorrow. I was going to post it today, but I didn't have time to get it uploaded. But I'll, I'll put it up in the morning. Got so much going on here. Let's see if I can bring it up on this app over here. Oh, and they would not monetize my video from last night, the live we did on the back patio, because of the, the Hispanic music. They even blocked it from some countries from even viewing the, the video. They didn't block it from the United States, but it's not going to make me any money because they would not monetize it, which I didn't think they were going to, so it doesn't bother me. It was fun anyway. <laughs> At least I'll try to show you the picture of the cross. Maybe you'll be able to see it. I don't know. I just put mine in the ground, the moonflower seeds. It took them a little while to come up, but they, they came up just like any other seeds. thing is so slow because I've got so much on it it takes up all the memory here is the cross that ah uh, it's not gonna focus oh no it's not gonna focus It picks it up if I turn it sideways and then you can't see it. I don't know how to darken it. Hmm. Well, I thought it was the light. It is the light, but no matter how I turn it, it's not going to show up. It shows up a little bit that way. Not very good. In some ways, you can't even see it. <laughs> I hate that. But anyway, I've got it posted on Facebook. If anybody can go to Facebook and look at it. It's been a hot one here today. There's Claire Quinn. Hello. I was trying to show a picture of the cross that Connie just did. I put it on uh, Facebook, but it's not letting me show a very good picture of it. 
the light is not agreeing with it. <laughs> it's on two. Maybe if I go into <coughs> <coughs> settings and darken it a little bit. I may have it too dark now, but we'll see. Go in and find it. It might help. trying to <laughs> I darkened the background a little I was afraid to get it too dark but the cross is kind of a brownish kind of a rust color and then it's got the leaves looks like ivy leaves or something wrapped around it it's really pretty can y'all see it very good I'm trying my best here. It's not cooperating, y'all. But anyway, she makes these and a lot of other stuff. Uh, from what she was telling me, she makes jewelry and uh, she's going to do a clock. I think a sunflower clock, which I think that is probably going to be really pretty. I don't know if it'll help to darken this anymore. Okay, I got eye comfort shield, everything you can think of it turned on it now, and it probably won't be any better. Get it back on here. Yeah, because the picture itself of the cross is a light color yeah, and see that didn't help at all I don't think I hate that can't focus it at all that way well I tried y'all I tried to, I saved it as a JPEG file, and I was going to try to put it in the chat, and it won't let me do that. So I don't know what else to do to try to get y'all to see it. Yeah, I don't know what else to do. 
If I could have saved it into a file. Huh. Well, I did save it in the file, but it won't give me a link to copy it over. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful cross. And the picture does not do it justice because the camera won't focus on it correctly. Yeah, tell us all about it, Susan. She was at Silver Dollar City for her birthday. We're going to do the birthday Sunday for April. And it'll be my YouTube birthday <laughs> celebration as well. Not actually my birthday, but it's my YouTube channel's birthday. It was the 11th of April. Yeah, I, I realized that, but I thought maybe I could put a, like a link. And you could click on the link and it might take you to the picture. But I can't, I haven't come up with a link for it either, so I can't do that. But oh well. Happy YouTube. Well, thank you, Claire. <laughs> Yeah, I bet that clock that um, Connie's going to be making is going to be really pretty, too. There's April. How's April tonight or this evening? It's not quite night yet, but it's after 7, 10 after 7. Yeah, I can't tell you any more about my video for tomorrow. Y'all have to watch it to see. I went shopping. <laughs> and I said I wasn't going to do it, but the devil made me do it. Because this time of year, uh, planting the garden... I always like to go to the garden centers for like Home Depot and uh, Walmart and Lowe's and just check out what plants they got on sale and special. And you got to walk around because they'll move them. They move them from time to time or season to season. So you don't know where they're at. You might go to the back because that's where they were last year and there's none there. Well, guess what? This year, they were right inside the front door going or the front gate going into Walmart's uh, garden center to the left. Because I was looking at all the 5 and $6 plants, and I said, uh-huh, not going to buy them. And I happened to come across some that had a $1.97. And I said, now you're talking. And I found, <coughs> <coughs> found a few things I come out of there with, which... I said I wasn't going to buy anything. I was just going to do the video. But can't do that when they're on special. Oh, my God. Anyway, you'll have to see this, the video. I'm not going to tell you any more about it. You're working on the clock. You got the colors done. You're going to pour it tonight. I bet it'll be pretty. And she sells this stuff, y'all. I asked her how much she'd take for the cross. In case someone asked, you know, like on Facebook. But she didn't know she had to figure up what to charge because of shipping and stuff like that. Because, you know, shipping anything is expensive nowadays. Oh, my God. Just a little ring is almost $6 to put it in a bubble wrap. And they won't let you mail it in anything but a bubble wrap. Because of their conveyor belts, the letters and stuff get hung. And it rips the envelopes open, so you got to put them in a bubble wrap. Smallest bubble wrap you get is at least five forty-five to mail it for the cheapest one, almost. <coughs> but oh well, <laughs> everything's going up. Your sister, Sheila, she's the plant person.
She's got many cactuses. Well, I've got wild cactuses all around here. <laughs> I had to actually dig up a bunch of them to take up, that were taken over my yard. And I don't mind keeping them in the yard, but it's so hard to keep them looking right. I mean, you, you get all the dead stuff falling around them and in them, and then they look like just a pile of junk with cactus growing out of it. And it's hard to get in there and try to clean it out. So I just gave up. I dug up a bunch of it. And some of it's trying to come back. Because you still don't get up every one of the little roots. And so you get more growing. And I love them because I have those big yellow flowers on them. But like I said, they're, they're invasive. <laughs> I never would have thought a cactus would be invasive. But they were in my corner of the yard over there. Your son made you a birthday cake? Well, good for you, Gladys. What kind of cake did he make you? Was it a chocolate one? <laughs> I wanted, well, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm going to keep on, I'm going to give my video away. I can't tell you no more about it. You just got to watch it. Yeah, French cut is just another fancy name to call a sideways cut bean. <laughs> Don't cut it straight, cut it slanted. Put a slant to it. That's French. Can't do it straight. <laughs> I'm in a silly mood again tonight, y'all. I guess because I feel pretty good. It's getting hot outside, so my, my joints are limbering up a little bit. <laughs> my, my hands are not quite as stiff. <laughs> yeah, but it needs water. They need to lift that re water restriction. I tell you, it's unreal. I need to get out there and water with my compost tea. And I was going to do that this afternoon, and it was just way too hot. And I said, I'm not going to get out there and wear myself out. And then I'm not going to feel good to have my life. So I said, I'll do that tomorrow. And there's Yehenan. Yehenan, how, how are you doing? I am confident the water will be fine soon. I am hopeful it seems to help in the long run. Well, they've had us on water restrictions for three years now. This is ridiculous. I've never seen a part in this world that took three years to get. And they claim that's why the water is still restricted. is because they can't get the parts they need to add on to the filter system. Well, I thought to myself, well, if you can't double what you got, add one. <laughs> Get another one that'll pump separately or something. There's got to be some way around it. I've got water storage, Claire. I've got three 22-gallon storage uh, bins. I've got five-gallon buckets all around the yard holding compost tea. It's just the fact that when you do that, then you got to dip a little bucket in all that and carry it around and water each plant individually you know you can't go around with a water hose with compost tea so it makes it bad when you got a big garden and it's hot <laughs> i know i need to sweat but hey <laughs> i don't want to pass out in the yard either well i don't have access to a rain barrel you know, years ago, I should have had them put gutters on my steel roof. That way I could have put some type of water container catchment thing at the end of it to catch the rainwater. And that would have added to my water supply. 
I know I got a neighbor that they put in gutters on their roof when they put it in, and they've got one of those great big, I don't know how many hundreds of gallons it holds, but they said through the rainy season here, when it does rain, it, it just pours. They said it pretty well fills up that container, and it lasts them all summer when they need it to water with. <laughs> hey, I need a wagon to haul that stuff around with. Well, I have to take a little two-and-a-half-gallon bucket because I can't carry a five-gallon bucket around. It's too heavy. With my back and neck injury, I can't lift it. So I use a two-and-a-half-gallon bucket. That just means all that walking back and forth, you know, to fill it up, pour it out on the plants, go back and get another one. And, you know, it, it's just a job, but that's the way it is right now. And again, that's why I uh, went to planting in totes and buckets that I can put <coughs> that I can put water compartments in the bottom of to help pour, hold the moisture into my pots. That way, you don't have to water them quite as much. Do you have anywhere that rain pools? No. <laughs> it goes through my yard like going through a sand sifter. I've got that, Susan. Haven't you been watching my videos? I did... Um, a video on how I converted a 22-gallon or 32-gallon trash can into a water container. Where I did that with the lid. I put a hole in the middle of the lid. I glued a screen on it. And when you need it to catch water from the rain, you flip the lid upside down. That causes it to drain in. When it gets full, you flip it over. That way, not much water will go back in it after that. I've got three of those out there. Plus, I've got probably 10 to 15 five-gallon buckets out there full of water. Yeah, you're way behind, Susan. <laughs> you need to go back to last summer and watch my water containment videos. I was showing people how to make their own water catchment container. So, yeah, I've, I've ended up with three of them. It wouldn't hurt to have a few more. And there's Shelly Edwards. Hello, Shelly. How's Shelly doing this evening? And that's what I'm going to be watering my plants with if I get out there and do it. It's with my compost tea that I've got in all those containers. And those uh, big 25-gallon trash cans, the black ones that I have lids on with bungee cords holding them down. I mean, they clamp on if they're on upright like they're supposed to be. But when you flip them over so they'll catch water, you have to use a bungee cord on them to hold them there. So it's funny you should say all that, Susan, because I, I did it, uh, several videos on converting a 25-gallon trash can into a water catchment container for your garden. I just don't show me out there watering, you know. I don't show you me with my little bucket dipping it down into the big containers and taking that little bucket around water and stuff. Shelly just got in from digging in the dirt. <laughs> I don't know, your glasses are giving you a headache? Do you need a new prescription or something? Your glasses shouldn't give you a headache. Hmm. <clears throat> 
Well, we haven't had the birthday party for April people yet, Gladys. Unless you had a birthday party some on somebody else's channel. <laughs> oh, so sorry, Gladys. I want cake. <laughs> She wants cake. I couldn't believe it. Too Tall Rob actually made the live last night. Him and Kai and Derek. It would have been real nice if that live I had would have been monetized, but oh well. It was fun. Y'all got to visit with little buddy a little bit and see his little cat nightlight that shows up at the entrance to the garden. Yeah, glasses should not give you a headache. They're either, you don't have the right prescription for your glasses, or something's wrong because they should not be giving you a headache. I don't know that I'm going to be baking anything Sunday, Gladys. <laughs> that reminds me, I didn't get birthday candles. <laughs> I might just use a little individual cupcake with a candle stuck in it. Like I did for Connie's, only I didn't have the candle for hers. Yeah, I always know there's something I'm forgetting at the store, and it was it was birthday candles. You know, they don't cost very much, but I just can't think to get them. <coughs> and I went ahead and opened this. It's a hosta. It's the bulb. I guess to go in um, that big pot that on the porch. And I had just put coleus in it. But I can move the coleus and put my hosta in the big pot. Put the coleus in some smaller pots, I guess. But those are pretty expensive, you know, when you buy the plants. And I know the, the bulb was not cheap either, so. And it's, they thrive in the shade, so it should, it should grow good in that big pot that's on my front porch. That's you pretty much in the shade 95% of the time. You spent all your money on your vacation, Susan. April says, I'll make Maui Wowie brownies. What is a Maui Wowie brownie? <laughs> oh, thank you, Yehannon. Yehannon. For that super chat. Thank you very much. That's well needed. Thank you. So much, so generous of you. But yeah, it was so late when that came. It'd been sitting on the back step. I didn't know it was there. I heard some commotion going on out front of the house. And then all of a sudden, later when I opened the back door, there was the little box. And it had that hosta bulb in it. And it's crying to be planted because it's got sprouts. It's got three big sprouts coming out of it. So I got to put that in that pot tomorrow and get it planted. 
I hope water situation is fixed soon. Thank you for the videos. Well, thank you for the super chat, Yehenan. I appreciate it very much. Pacolo, Pacolo, Pacolo -lo brownies. <laughs> I can't even say that. <laughs> I could say Maui brownie, Maui, what was it? Maui wowie brownies, but I can't say Pacolo -lo brownie. <laughs> I bet the brownies are good, whatever you call them. It's a funny brownie. <laughs> Is that one of those brownies that makes you see things when you eat it? <laughs> That's right. I think today was Gladys's birthday, but we're going to celebrate all the, the April birthdays this coming Sunday. That's what I thought, April, a pot brownie. <laughs> the way I've been acting last night and tonight, you think I've been eating a pot brownie? <laughs> but I promise you I have not. <laughs> Y'all. I forgot to drink my my fire cider. That's why I'm coughing. And that quart jar full, I strained it, and it only made, it didn't even make a pint jar. But you only use like a, <coughs> if I quit coughing, you only use a teaspoon of it at a time. So I'm going to fix me some. I guess I put different ingredients in mine than Claire did. That that she sent me. Because what she sent was clear. It was clear as water. You see the color of mine, it looked like coffee. <laughs> but I guarantee it don't smell like coffee. You guys are making me want sweets. I love chocolate. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it every day is a gift. Cherish them. And I hear little buddy. Let me get his snack. <laughs> Probably not going to want to come in. Coming in? No, you want to eat it out there? Okay, here. Yeah. 
sounds like there's air conditioning on out there. <laughs> Oh, I got that way too hot. See if I can drink this. It cools down just a tiny bit. Maybe that'll help my coughing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what Claire put in hers, but her, her fire cider came out completely clear white or clear, just like water. But it wasn't water. <laughs> it was fire cider. But you see, mine is not clear. It's a little bit lighter when you put a couple of teaspoons in a, a little glass of water. But it's not clear like hers was. So she put different ingredients in hers than I did mine, I guess. I don't know. White lightning. That's kind of what it smelled like, April. <laughs> Yeah, I've been drinking fire cider, trying to do it every single day, sometimes once or twice a day, but then I forgot it the last couple of days, and I've got a little cough going on. <clears throat> Whew. Still too hot to drink. Oh no, Susan, what's going on? I must I must have missed a Oh my gosh, Susan. So I got a refusal letter today and I got a letter from the government saying all of my life information was leaked in a cyber attack. Got two letters today that are concerning one. I told the guy I wouldn't qualify for life insurance, but he wanted me to apply anyway. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of these companies won't cover you with life insurance if you've got any medical problems already. <clears throat> Never heard of fire cider? Well, it's garlic it's all kind of spices oranges lemons just about everything but the kitchen sink throw it in a jar and you let it set for a week or two <laughs> <coughs> this one set for a month because i put it in there uh march 7th and i took it out this past week and strained it and everything and you know there's gnats I guess it's gnat season I've noticed for the last couple of days and I don't have food out but gnats come in the house they're outside just enough to drive you crazy but the fire cider that I was always used to uh, and I learned it from some black people that worked on the job that I worked on in Fort Worth years ago uh, one of the guys was really sick, and his mom sent him to work one day with a jar full of fire cider. And it was nothing but onions chopped up, garlic chopped up, all kind of spices in it, um, oranges, lemons, everything but the kitchen sink in that pot and just cooked it to death. Just cooked everything till it was mush. And then... Uh, Basically, you don't even have to strain it because it's all gooey. It's just, it's a mush by the time it gets done, like my fire cider was. And I've got a little bit of it left. And you just put a spoonful in this much water, hot water or warm water, and drink it. And it clears up your, I mean, it cleared my chest up right away. But if you're sick with a cold, chest congestion or anything, you need fire cider. But I didn't know about putting all the stuff in a container and just letting it sit. 
and let everything leak out into the vinegar the way you do. The only way I knew to do it was put it in a pot and cook it. And you just cooked it till it was basically mashed potatoes. Wet, sloppy mashed potatoes is the consistency of that fire cider. And then it's so strong, you just take about a, a teaspoonful and put it to this much water, warm water, and drink it. You, you might end up with garlic breath or onion breath, but if it clears your chest up, you're not going to mind it. <laughs> Because the first time I tried it, you know, I never, it it never dawned on me. Because I, I knew they always took it for colds and flu and congestion in their chest from flus and colds. But it never dawned on me that it would work the same for allergies. Well, I tried it and it worked. <laughs> so I've been, I keep fire cider here all the time now. With what Claire sent. <laughs> And she sent me the recipe. But like I said, I don't know what I put in mine different. That mine comes out. It doesn't come out crystal clear like hers did. Gladys said her pad has been cutting in and out. I don't know if she was supposed to get another one. I don't know if she, it's ever come yet or not. Yeah, because you were in an area, Susan, that you weren't allergic to a bunch of stuff. You came home and it put you back in that area where a lot of stuff around you, you're allergic to. <laughs> My allergies aren't as bad if I'm in the city. You know, a big city, like if I'm, I stay at my daughter's that when she was up in Watauga, I could tell a big difference with my allergies and my sinuses and everything when I'd stay up there overnight. Oh yeah, six hours away makes a big difference. A refurbished phone tomorrow. Okay. Well, I knew you said she was going to get it pretty soon. And I didn't remember if it was a phone or a, a just a tablet or what <clears throat> oh we got miss weaver in here hi miss weaver glad you could make it well i'll drink this soon as i can get it to my mouth it's so hot i don't want to burn myself That's not quite as strong as what I made when I cooked it. So I don't know. You may have to put more than two teaspoons in there. Or it might be because I got a cough drop in my mouth. But that that I made, that I just boiled, I boiled it for hours. It works, but it's strong. You have to dilute it down in water. <clears throat> y'all what can you do to keep gnats out of your house i don't know why they're coming in here i guess every time i open the door they fly in able to get one to keep connected so she enjoys the company just a blessing for her yeah it is connie <laughs> I don't care what they call it, fire cider or what. It's still like taking medicine because it don't taste good. And then that's flying around my face, but he don't want no part of this stuff. Yeah, I was watching one of my friend's videos. <clears throat> they have a YouTube channel. 
And that's one thing they mentioned on their video today was that the gnats just ate them alive when they were out working in their garden, that it was gnat season there. And the gnats just ate them alive. They would get on her neck and bite her. Well, I haven't been bit by the gnats yet, but they just get in my face. They're, they bug me. Pads blinking. Yeah, see, that's what was confusing because she said her pad's blinking. So I didn't know if she actually had like an iPad or if it's a phone or what she was using. You didn't even take your laptop out of the bag the whole time you were on vacation. Just did stuff on my phone. Oh. <laughs> and there's Kay's Days. Hello. Welcome to our chat. If you're wondering what I'm drinking, I'm drinking fire cider. I've started coughing from my allergies, and I'm hoping this will help. It'll give me garlic breath, but hey, if it'll stop me from coughing. I got in Walmart the other day, and I don't remember what it was I was looking for. But I started moving stuff on the shelf, and and I know the shelves are not real dusty, but just that little bit of moving stuff back and forth, there was a little bit of pollen settled down on some things. It got it up in the air. I started coughing and gagging. I guess people around me thought I was dying. They probably figured I had COVID or something. But I promise you, I was not sick. Yeah, the pollen is bad. And these gnats are driving me crazy. Let me see if Buddy's still eating, because I don't want the ants to get in his bowl. Then he went back and got in the swing, and he's he's over there swinging in his swing. <laughs> Makes me think of that song, just a swinging. <laughs> he likes hanging out in his swing or laying up on the table. I've tried eating honey. There's honey in this. <laughs> I've tried all that locally grown honey. And like I said, there's honey in this. I put honey in my fire cider. At least you can tell I've started talking. I'm not coughing. So something's working. <laughs> I mean, five minutes from now, I may be coughing, but I'm not coughing right now. <laughs> the lemon, the lime, all that other stuff in there with the garlic and the onions and the spices. But hey, if it works, I'm all for it. <laughs> I don't care what it tastes like. If I can get it down, I'm taking it. I'm tired of fighting allergies. I got one gnat that keeps flying around here. <laughs> it's a wonder you don't see him on the screen. <laughs> Well, I haven't seen Kai or Derek, Too Tall Rob. I 
Yeah, my car is so dusty right now just from pollen and stuff. Because it, it's parked under the carport all the time. So when it rains, it doesn't get washed off. So I probably have the dustiest car in the neighborhood right now because everybody else's car is parked out in the open in the driveway. So when it rains, the car gets washed off. Mine's under the carport, so it, it all the dust is still on it and the pollen. I said next time we get a pouring down rain, I'm just going to back it out from under the, the carport and let it wash it off for me. Because just to wash it off at the, the uh, car wash, it's $10.00. And then if you want your tires washed, it's a couple dollars more. Then if you want the wax, it's a few dollars more. You can spend $20 just to wash your car at the car wash and drive it through. <laughs> and then it's not even wiped down. <laughs> your car wash is $20. See, that's... And yeah, on the water bill that they sent with the water restrictions, get this, it says you can wash your car anytime at your local car wash. But you can't wash it in your driveway. Uh-uh. Well, yeah, I feel pretty good today. I slept pretty decent last night. I haven't been out doing anything strenuous because I was resting up pretty much yesterday from working on my floor. I'll tell you, working on that floor did me in. For, I spent several days working on that floor. And finally got around to posting that video. So it took me a, a good day yesterday to kind of get over that. You're 65 and low on energy. Well, I take a handful of vitamins every night. <laughs> My brother saw me do it one time. He said, sis, taking all them prescription drugs ain't going to help you. That's the worst thing you can do. I said, they're not prescription drugs. I said, everything I got in my hand is a vitamin that I bought right off the counter. It's vitamin C. It's calcium. B12. <laughs> All that good stuff that you take for your body, not prescription drugs. He just knew I was taking a handful of prescription drugs. I know, I spend a lot of money on vitamins every month. It's, it's outrageous. Because you know, your Medicare and your prescription drug plans and all that, if you can buy it on the counter, they will not pay for it. It's got to be a prescription drug. And I refuse to take a lot of these prescription drugs. I don't need them. If you start taking them, you're going to take more and more all the time. Well, that's not too bad, Sheila. $20 a month for unlimited washes. But still, I, I couldn't afford $20 every single month to keep my car clean. I mean, there might be some months I'm running short and I wouldn't have that $20 for them to take. <laughs> we don't have anything like that here that I'm aware of. We've got several car washes. <coughs> we got one or a couple of them where you drive it in the little stall. And you get out with the pressure hose and, you, and the brush and you wash it yourself. You hose it down yourself. Do whatever you do to it yourself. But you know, I found the last time I went there to do that, it was taking me more to put quarters in that machine to keep it running just to wash and rinse my car than it would if I just went to the automated car wash and paid my $10 and drive through. So that's what I do now. When I need it washed, I'll just pay my $10 and drive it through the car wash and they'll wash the dust off of it for me. Because that's all it is. It gets dusty sitting there. This wind blowing and this dry dust around here and all the pollen. You don't really need a heavy cleaner or anything like that. It just needs the dust washed off of it. 
And the last time I went to the car wash to use the vacuum, oh my God, that was outrageous. It was costing me like a dollar for just the driver section of the front of the car to vacuum it. So it would take me four dollars to vacuum the whole car, and then if you wanted to vacuum out the the boot, you know, the trunk, that was even more. I said, forget it. I got me one of them little dust busters. <laughs> And then my son got me my new um, vacuum cleaner for Christmas that has all these attachments and it's portable. You can take it outside and use it. The last time my car was cleaned out, it was cleaned out with that. It works so much better than the one at the car wash, <laughs> I'll tell you. And it's got the long extended wand that you can stick down in there and get to where you can't reach without standing on your head in your car. Now, I just stand there and put that hose in there and vacuum it up. It works great. Yeah, I mean, if you go twice, you've already spent $20 just to wash your car off. Yeah, it sounds like a good deal, but I'm so limited on my funds. I, I couldn't promise them 20 a month to do that. And there's Alfonso. Hello. Haven't seen you in a couple of lives. How's Alfonso doing? Yeah, prices on everything's going up. I mean, you know, used to, if you needed air in your tires, you pulled up at the gas station. There's a gas station attendant there that would come out. He'd check your oil if you wanted him to. Uh, he'd check your, the air in your tires. If you thought you needed air, he'd put it in there for free. Now, you pull up to get air in your tire they don't do it for you. You got to go to this machine and fill it full of quarters and then get air to come out to fill your tires up. I said, I didn't think I'd ever see the day you had to pay for air, but we're doing it. We're paying for air today. And there is A.S. Blind Made Production. Well, that's Alfonso. He's just got that long name. I've been working. Also backing up my PC. My hard drive is failing. Oh, I see. Well, I need to get rid of my big desktop computer that's in that bedroom that I was working in. Because it's so out of date. It's ridiculous. It's just not capable of getting on the internet anymore and doing the things I want to do. I, what websites I can go to, only half of it will show up. I mean, it's like it's limited with what you view on a website. And I said, it won't be long before my laptop will be doing that because my laptop is quite a few years old. But I said, I'll use it as long as I can, then I'll break bad and get me another one. It's just a matter of getting that computer out of the bedroom and, I guess, stick it in the shed. I've got two other older computers that's out in the shed right now. That You know, they work perfect, but they're out of date. They're not capable of doing the stuff that the computers are capable of doing today. As far as getting online and, you know, the printer, uh, all that stuff is out of date. And you can only update them for so long before you just can't do it anymore. And there's Melissa. Hello, Melissa. How is Melissa doing this evening?
And there's Joanne Dula. Hello, Joanne. How are you doing this evening? <clears throat> well, good, Melissa. Y'all about ready to answer some question for seeds? <laughs> I can just ask random questions or we can play trivia. I'm going to feed everybody. Be right back. Okay, April. <laughs> She's always in and out. You're very welcome, April. You got to get them planted so they'll grow. I know they'll grow good where you're at in Hawaii. I had a great day. It's been a warm day today. But it's been a pretty good day. Okay, let's see. Well, we dropped down to 36 the minute I said something about playing trivia. And there's Kay's Days. Hello. How are you doing? Okay, first question. What did it mean to get your berries razzed? Well, you can probably answer some of the questions, Sheila. Not sexed up. <laughs> Everybody thought that last time when I asked it. Well, it's kind of close. Well, I guess I'm going to have to give it to April. Because it says right here the answer. You're having fun. But it says in a non-sexual way. <laughs> so you're not really getting sexed up. <laughs> Well, these are old school questions, so. I'm sure everybody knows them. Okay, what did the term wet rag mean? If somebody told you you were wet, wet rag. Melissa Fryan got it. Having no fun. You're no fun at all. You're a wet rag. What was liquid paper? I'm going to give that to Melissa. It's basically white out. It was to white out your mistakes, like in typing or writing or anything like that. <laughs> Ashley said pissy pants. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> 
What show is Lucille Ball famous for? Y'all know that. Every one of you know it. We've all watched it. I love Lucy. Ashley was the first one on the wire with it. Ashley Chapman. What is a squad? If I told you my squad was coming over, what is a squad? <laughs> Sheila says, man, you're all too fast. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're telling me groups, crews, group of people. But what kind of group of people? Group of friends, Alfonso got it. Way to go, Alfonso. It's a group of friends, not just a group of people. <laughs> whoop, whoop, Alfonso. When something is on fleek, what does that mean? If someone tells you you're on fleek, F-L-E-E-K, what does that mean? Nope, not on point, not perfect, not broken. It could be nice or it could not be. I don't know. But what are they telling you if they tell you you're on fleek? Perfectly done. <laughs> exactly right. Well, what do you mean by perfectly done, Alfonso? Are you talking about cooking, dressing, or what? It's just the way it goes. In fashion, Joanne Dula. Way to go, Joanne. It means that you are in fashion. Or it's fashionable the way you're dressed. So, Joanne Dula got that. And see, y'all were getting close when you were saying perfectly done or exactly right, but... That didn't tell me that was the way you're dressed or, you know, the fashion. So, Joanne got it. <laughs> this is true or false. Most gensers want to have an impact on the world with their jobs. True or false. Most gensers want to have an impact on the world with their jobs. True. Joanne Dula got it again. Way to go, Joanne. We dropped now that's not right, y'all. We dropped down to 34 because since we've been playing trivia. People have just they don't want to play trivia, I guess. Now we drop down to 32. 
I guess we're going to have to quit playing trivia to keep people in live chat. What does the acronym GOAT stand for? What does the acronym GOAT stand for? This one's a little bit more harder. I mean, did I just say that more harder? <laughs> Ashley Chapman was the first one that comes came in with that one. Way to go, Ashley. Greatest of all time. Okay, what does it mean to clap back? What does it mean to clap back? It is more harder. <laughs> yeah, that's true too, Susan. They may just have something else to do. What does it mean to clap back? I'm going to have to give that to Melissa. Way to go, Melissa. It's a response to a comment or something. <coughs> this is true or false. One third of Jenzer's would like to retire by the age of 60. True or false? One third of Jenzers would like to retire by the age of 60. True or false? Joanne Dula, she's the first one that come in with true. Way to go, Joanne. What does it mean to throw shade? What does it mean to throw shade? Remember, this is old school stuff. Well, the answers I'm getting, I'm going to have to give it to Ashley. Shame, I guess, because everybody else says cold shoulder, degrade. It is to make a subtle yet mean comment. That's what to throw shade is. So I'm giving it to Ashley. Way to go, Ashley. Whoop, whoop. What is a big, humble brag? What is a big, what is a humble brag? Silent viewers, thank you for being here with us, Linda Prisha. Glute. I don't ignore. What is a um, humble brag? A humble brag.
Oxymoron. What do you mean by oxymoron, Linda? You still there, Linda Rowe? <laughs> what did you mean by oxymoron? A statement that br brings attention to you. <clears throat> Y'all forgot when we asked this question the last time. Yeah, I'm going to give it to Linda. I think she's closer than anybody come. Because a humble brag is when a person is complaining about something, but adding in details that allow them to brag about themselves while they're complaining. Y'all ever done that before? So I'm giving that to Linda Rowe. Way to go, Linda. True or false, Johnny Depp is a musician. We all know he's an actor, but is he a mu musician as well? <laughs> There's Snow White. Hello, Snow White. True. Ashley Chapman got it. Way to go, Ashley. Oh, I'm dropping the cards in the floor. <clears throat> Whew, I gotta check on something here. Oh, well, where were we? This is a true or false. Well, no, I better not ask a true or false yet because I've still got letters up there. What, mo <laughs> what movie features the couple Rose and Jack? What movie features the couple Rose and Jack? Ashley got it again. It's the Titanic. Way to go, Ashley. Mm-hmm. 
What does the acronym BAE stand for? B A E. BAE. What does the acronym BAE stand for? <coughs> No, that's not what they're asking for. It doesn't mean baby. Well, thank you, Alfonso. I give you a bear hug, too. <laughs> no, you're kind of off. It doesn't mean baby. It doesn't mean... It could mean girlfriend, but that's not what they're asking. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. It's a pet name that stands for before anyone else. See the letters B, A, E, before anyone else. So we're just going to throw that one out. Y'all have to remember it next time. <laughs> True or false? Millennials hate reading books. True or false? Millennials hate reading books. Ashley Chapman, false. Way to go, Ashley. It says, false. Most millennials read at least five books per year. I don't hardly ever open a book anymore. I mean, I used to read once in a while, but I don't even read a book anymore. Okay, if a person is woke, W-O-K-E, they are what? If a person is woke, they are what? Aware, Melissa. Way to go, Melissa. <coughs> if they say that you're woke then you're very aware of your current affairs and culture. So you're very aware of things. When is something... <coughs> I think that coffee's making me cough. <coughs> I'm going to start coughing so I'm Frank coffee. I may have to quit drinking coffee, huh? Now, where was I? Okay. When is something considered lit? L-I-T. When is something considered lit? Lit. No, not buzzed. It could be awesome. Oh, you're working on many menu planning, huh, Susan? I'll give Ashley a point for being awesome. But can anybody else give me another definition of lit when something is lit? Not drunk.
<laughs> well, I'm going to tell you because Ashley's already got a point for it. It's when it's very fun and exuberant event, usually a party or concert. That's considered lit. So now y'all know. Whoopity doo. <laughs> Already asked that one. Okay, what does it mean to be ghosted? What does it mean to be <coughs> <coughs> ghosted? <coughs> oh. I hate it when I have to cough. Gaslighted. I don't know what gaslighted is. Left on read. Ignored is part of it. I'll give Ashley a point for ignored. Here's the definition. It says someone disappeared from your life, usually by, by not replying to text or other contact. That means they're, you're ghosted. You know, if you don't hear from that person ever again, you text them, they never reply. When a person is described as extra, what does that mean? When a person is described as extra, what does that mean? Too much? <laughs> well, it could be too much. I'll give that to Melissa. They are over the top and dramatic. So too much could be basically it. Everybody knows this. It's just going to be a matter of the first one that hits the button. True or false? Nemo is a character from SpongeBob. True or false? Nemo is a character from Spongebob. Mille no, Ashley got it. First one that come in with false. Ashley Chapman. Way to go, Ashley. <laughs> okay, this is A, B, or C. What? Which age group spends the most time on social media? A. Genzer. B. Millennials. C. Gen X. Alfonso got it. Hold on. Oh, he did come in before Ashley. I'm sorry, Alfonso. You did come in. I'm giving that to Alfonso. Way to go, Alfonso. Connie. Connie Jones got this at C. Gen X. Way to go, Connie. Okay, this 
Uh, next one is true or false. Millennials are getting divorced more than any other generation. True or false? Millennials are getting divorced more than any other generation. True or false? Melissa Fran came in with false. It's correct. It is false. Way to go, Melissa. Okay, where did Starbucks get its start? A, Seattle, B, Atlanta, C, Portland. Where did Starbucks get its start? A, Seattle, B, Atlanta, C, Portland. Melissa got it. It's A, it's Seattle. Way to go, Melissa. Itching. <clears throat> what does it mean when you swipe right on someone? What does it mean when you swipe right on someone? How are your answers coming up before I hear the question? I have no idea. I'm reading the questions before I ever see answers up here. Ashley came in first with like. Ashley Chapman. I don't know how you could hear the answers before I'm reading the question. It's coming up before I hear the questions. I have no idea. It might be your connection. I have no idea. things people do. What is the Tide Pods Challenge? Can anybody tell me what the Tide Pods Challenge was? Oh, wow, Connie. Eating them on YouTube. Yep, that's right. It was eating the Tide Pods that you wash your clothes with. They had a Tide Pod challenge out where they were actually eating these Tide Pods. So Alfonso got that one. Way to go, Alfonso. I would not want to eat those things. Ooh, eating soap. That cannot be good, especially Tide. <laughs> it means they are yummy. <laughs> Death was possible. Yeah, it could do you in to eat those Tide pods. I'm not eating them. <clears throat> okay, what does the term pedal pushers refer to? What does the term pedal pushers 
refer to. Ooh, my hair is hot on my neck back there. <laughs> Drug dealer. Well, it's more like a Capri pants, but a cr actually Capri pants and pedal pushers are two different things. Crop pants are different. Knee length pants are different. Nobody can tell me exactly what pedal pushers are. Got you. Got you. Ladies, think. Water pedal pushers. You're describing other pants, but you're not describing a pedal pusher. <laughs> no, a pedal pusher doesn't sell anything. They are pants, but y'all are naming other types of pants, not a pedal pusher. Calf length pants. Connie got it. Way to go, Connie. Here is the correct definition of uh, pedal pushers. Women's slacks that end at the calves. See, Capri pants are a lot different than just pants that stop at the calf. Crop pants are different. So, calf length pants is the closest we've got to it yet. So, that's Connie. Way to go, Connie. Okay, what TV show is Joni Loves Chachi a spinoff from? What TV show is Joni Loves Chachi a spinoff of? Happy Days, Melissa Fryan. Way to go, Melissa. When did the Berlin Wall fall? What year? When did the Berlin Wall fall? <coughs> Eighty nine, Ashley got it. it was nineteen eighty nine. Way to go, Ashley. You're you're leading the pack right now. What was the name of the idolized suburban family in Leave It to Beaver? What was the name of the idolized family suburban family? In Leave It to Beaver. Cleaver, Connie Jones. Way to go, Connie. The first Earth Day was thanks to the boomer generation in what year? A, 1965. B, 1970. C, 1975. The first Earth Day was thanks to the Boomer Generation in what year? Joanne Dula was B, 1970. Way to go, Joanne. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> 
now known as a hashtag, what was the symbol called before that? Now known as the hashtag, what was the symbol known before that? Pound sign, April flowers, way to go, April. Whoop, whoop, April. <laughs> What TV show was located at the fictional Eastland School, an all-girls boarding school? What TV show was located at the fictional Eastland School, an all-girls boarding school? Connie Jones, it's the facts of life. Way to go, Connie. <laughs> what percentage of boomers financially support their adult children? A, 20%, B, 40%, C, 60%. What percentage of boomers financially support their adult children? Joanne Dula, C. Way to go, Joanne. It was 60%. Your recording camera is trying to focus on you. Hold the pic on your phone in front of you for the focus. What? I don't know what you're saying. That's Esther Johnson. Well, hello, Esther. I don't know what it's doing. Oh, y'all know this. Who famously bit the head off of a bat? No, I didn't make this blouse. I made other ones similar to it, the same pattern, but I didn't make this one. Oh, wow, Susan, things are going really bad in the Middle East right now. Ozzy, Ashley Chapman. Way to go, Ashley. From the 50s to the 80s, children were taught to duck and cover in case of what? From the 50s to the 80s, children were taught to duck and cover in case of what? A bomb, April flowers. Way to go, April. It was a nuclear bomb explosion is what we were taught to duck and cover from. Because I remember we had those drills in our school when I was a kid. You had to get under your desk or under a table or under something for those uh, drills we had on that. Which beetle said we're more popular than Jesus? A. Ringo Starr B. John Lennon C. Paul McCartney Melissa Fran, it's B. <coughs> J. 
John Lennon. Got all these A, B, or C questions coming up. What was the first web browser that popularized the internet? Now, y'all re ought to remember this because we have so much discussion on it. I don't think anybody came up with it. And I don't even remember ever hearing about this, but... Not Netscape. Not AOL. It was before that. <laughs> what was the first web browser that popularized the internet? It was older than AOL or any of them that was mentioned so far. Not the Explorer. Not Netscape. <laughs> Y'all give up? <laughs> Ooh, this gnat's driving me crazy. Not World Wide Web. <laughs> Sheila says, I know this, but my mind's blank. Not Internet Explorer. Not Adobe, not Nexus. <laughs> no, not Macintosh. I didn't know Macintosh was a, a browser. Y'all give up. IBS. I don't even know what that is. Not Linux. Not Windows. Windows is not a browser. Windows is a pr program that you can get onto different browsers. <laughs> I'm going to kick myself when you say it. Nobody knows. Nobody remembers. All right, we're going to throw this one out. It was Mosaic. Well, Connie said it about the time I... I'm going to give it to Connie because there's no way she could have heard me say that before she typed it in. She already had it typed in and it come out, popped up at the same time I opened my mouth, so... Connie's got that. It's mosaic. Way to go, Connie. All of you should know this one. If someone is doing the frug, what are they doing? Your first exposure to the internet was Netscape. Back in 1997 in the 8th grade. Hmm. No, not frugal living. Melissa got it. It's dancing. The frug was the name of a dance way back when. <laughs> so Melissa got it. Way to go, Melissa.
Who won Album of the Year at the 1978 Grammys? A. Led Zeppelin B. Fleetwood Mac C. Michael Jackson Who won Album of the Year at the 1978 Grammys? A. Led Zeppelin B. Fleetwood Mac C. Michael Jackson Ashley Chapman got it. Fleetwood Mac. Way to go, Ashley. What are the first names of all the members of the Beatles? I just need their first names. There's one, two, three. There's four of them. The first names of all the Beatle members. Who was the other one, Ashley? There's four of them. George, okay. Ashley Chapman got that. Way to go, Ashley. It was John, Paul, Ringo, and George. Who did the comedy tour titled Raw? Who did the comedy tour titled Raw? <laughs> you had their first album on record 20, 20 years ago. Eddie Murphy, way to go, Melissa. What is the Piggly Wiggly? A, a toy. B, a gym. C, a grocery store. What is the A, a toy, B, a gym, C, grocery store? C, Connie, oh, and when Ashley got it. She's up there. I didn't see it. She came in first at C, Ashley Chapman. When a person is out to lunch, what did they mean? When a person was out to lunch, what did that mean? <laughs> nope, not out on the not out of the office. You got to remember, this is old school words, old school phrases. No, not at all present in mind. I'm going to give it to Melissa. Because <laughs> it means um, very confused or slow-witted. That means they're not too bright up there. The term gnarly meant what? The term gnarly meant what? G-N-A-R-L-Y. Melissa got it again. Cool. <laughs> Who won the Country Music Association Female Vocalist of the Year for 1974? A. Loretta Lynn B. Olivia Newton-John C. Tanya Tucker Who 
who won the Country Music Association Female Vocalist of the Year for 1974. Melissa Fran, it was Olivia Newton-John. Way to go, Melissa. What country was Desi Arnaz born in? Everybody should know that. that ever watch that show. Cuba, Melissa Fran got it again. Way to go, Melissa. It was Cuba. What TV show asked who shot J.R.? What TV show asked, who shot Jr. Dallas, Ashley Chapman got it. Way to go, Ashley. What actress faked her death in the movie Sleeping with the Enemy? What actress faked her death in the movie Sleeping with the Enemy? Connie Jones, it was Julia Roberts. Way to go, Connie. Whoop, whoop, Connie. <laughs> what is a church key used for? What is a church key used for? Not doors. <laughs> Connie Jones opening bottles. Way to go, Connie. To get into church. <laughs> I don't think that church key would help you get into church. I wish I had one of those old bottle openers that they called a church key. But it was one that was famous for opening the, the glass drink bottles. And beer bottles, because they didn't have the twist-off tops back then. They didn't have pop tops. And you had to have one of those church keys or bottle openers to open the bottle of soda or the bottle of beer or whatever you were drinking. Yeah, a lot of people used it to open beer bottles with. <laughs> Sonny Bono was a congressman for what state? A, Arizona, B, Colorado, or C, California. Sonny Bono was a congressman for what state? A, Arizona, B, Colorado, or C, California. Joanne Dula, C, California. Way to go. Who is the author of Interview with the Vampire? Who is the author of Interview with the Vampire? April, the skeleton key was like a pass key. It would get you in most doors, but... Not the church key. The church key was strictly a bottle opener. 
Joanne Dula got it. Ann Rice. Way to go, Joanne. Whoop, whoop, Joanne. <laughs> What TV show included characters Rose, Blanche, Dorothy, and Sophia? What TV show included characters Rose, Blanche, Dorothy, and Sophia? Ashley got it again. Golden Girls. Way to go, Ashley. When was smoking banned on commercial airlines? A, 1950s, B, 1970s, C, 1990s. When was smoking banned on commercial airlines? A, 1950s, B, 1970s, or C, 1990s? Ashley Chapman got it again at C, 1990s. Way to go, Ashley. True or false? Most millennials know how to properly check their tire pressure. True or false? Most millennials know how to properly check their tire pressure. Ashley Chapman, it's false. Way to go. Melissa says, I got that too. I don't know. Did I miss something? Hold on. Oh, I see, Melissa, you put the date in there. You didn't put A, B, or C. I was glancing up and looking for the A, B, or C. So I give Melissa a point, too, for that, because she got the date. Yeah, I got it. I gave her a point for it. What does the slang word cray mean? If somebody tells you you're cray, what are they telling you? C-R-A-Y, cray. Crazy, Ashley Chapman got it. They're telling you you are Looney Tunes. <laughs> What is tender? Or tender. What is tender? T I N D E R. A dating site. Ashley got that one. Way to go, Ashley. Whoop, whoop, Ashley. <laughs> This is a true or false. Gensers, <laughs> Gensers receive an average of $7 per week in allowance. Gensers receive an average of $7 per week in allowance. Sharon Tate, it's false. Way to go, Sharon. They actually get almost $17 a week. 
says here they actually get $16.90 a week on average for an allowance. I remember when I was a kid, I think we got something like a dollar an allowance, me and my, I had three brothers at the time because the two younger ones weren't born yet. And we'd get like a dollar and we thought we were rich because we could go to the the little walk-in theater not too far from where we lived. And we could pay to, to go in to see the movie. We could get us a drink. We could get some popcorn and we could get some candy for that dollar. Because it was only like 25 cents to get in to see the movie. And then you had 75 cents to spend on popcorn and drink and candy. <laughs> We thought we were rich. You couldn't do that today on a, a dollar. It probably cost me twenty dollars to go to the movie to get to pay for the ticket, to get me a, a drink, a coke, and get a bag of popcorn and a candy bar. I probably couldn't do it for twenty. <laughs> She may have very fast internet connection. But good Lord, if I was, if, if, when I was a kid, if I was getting $17 a week allowance, oh my God, I would have thought I died and went to heaven. <laughs> I would, I'd be a millionaire with that much money to spend as a little kid. The way prices were. I mean, you're talking before drinks even went up to seven cents. You know, I don't know what they cost way back then, but it wasn't, it wasn't probably five cents for a, a drink. I don't remember how much the bag of popcorn was, but shoot, you could go to the little walk-in theater, and like I said, you could pay for the ticket to see the movie, get your bag of popcorn, get your drink, get you some candy, and still have money left. <laughs> You try doing that today, they'd look at you like you've lost your mind. <laughs> Dollar ain't going to get you nowhere. <laughs> okay, this is a true or false. One in four workers aged 18 to 25 don't take a single paid vacation. True or false. One in four workers aged 18 to 25 don't take a single paid vacation day. Ashley Chapman, it is true. Way to go, Ashley. Okay, let's see. Which Brady Bunch character had a crush on the monkey's front man? A. Alice, B. Jan, C. Marcia. Which Brady Bunch character had a crush on the monkey's front man? A. Alice, B. Jan, C. Marcia. Ashley got it again. It was Marcia. Way to go, Ashley. You are still leading. <laughs> Who is also known as Yeezy? What popular person is also known as Yeezy? Y-E-E-Z-Y. -E -E Yeezy. Who is all Kanye West? Connie got it. Way to go, Connie. Whoop, whoop, Connie. What show premiered in 1994 but is now popular with millennials? I don't know what a vacation is, April. 
I don't think I've ever been on one. Friends, Connie Jones. Way to go, Connie. Whoop, whoop. True or false? Genzer's account for up to $143 billion in direct spending. True or false? Genzer's account for up to $143 billion in direct spending. Ashley Chapman, it's true. Way to go, Ashley. Girl, you are just going to go home with the bank, aren't you? Y'all getting tired of playing yet? <laughs> what does the acronym FR stand for? What does the acronym FR stand for? A. France, B. For real, C. Fun run. For real, Ashley got it. Way to go, Ashley. What horror movie villain wears a hockey mask and carries a machete? What horror movie villain wears a hockey mask and carries a machete? Jason, Ashley Chapman got it again. Who has teardrops on her guitar? Who has teardrops on her guitar? Girls just want to have fun. <laughs> Taylor. Yep, it's Taylor Swift. Ashley Chapman got it again. Way to go, Ashley. What does the acronym BRB stand for? April should know that. She uses it all the time. What does the acronym BRB stand for? Be right back. Ashley got it first. <laughs> Y'all getting tired? It's me when I sing a love song. <laughs> oh, man. I need to get in there in the bedroom and drill holes in that vent cover so I can put some, two screws in it, one at each end. and Then maybe I can go put my screw, my... Uh, my drill and all my other stuff back in the shed tomorrow. I can do it in the morning. I don't really have to do it now. Bring me a beer. <laughs> then that would be B. <coughs> then it would have to be BMB, not BRB. April sitting outside. It's lovely. I know it was nice outside last night. If they just weren't playing that music, I would have been monetized. I'd have made money off of that video. As it is, I didn't make nothing. But that's okay. What percentage of mill millennials eat organic? A, 50%. B, 60%. C, 70%. What percentage of millennials eat organic? A, 50%, B, 60%, C, 70%. 
Sheila McDaniel, it's A, 50%. Way to go, Sheila. Fill in the blank. Netflix and blank. Fill in the blank. Netflix and chill. Ashley Chapman got it. Way to go, Ashley. Man, nobody can keep up with you. You're just making them eat your dust. Name the MTV character that says, I am the great corn holio. I need TP for my bunch hole. <laughs> my son loved this show. Name the MTV character that says, I am the great corn holio. I need TP for my bunch hole. Beavis and Butthead, Connie Jones. <laughs> my granddaughter loved it too when she was little because my son watched it all the time. So she'd get up there and watch it with him. <laughs> what happened to Beavis and Butthead? Did they still show that on TV or not? I, I don't even know anymore. I mean, my son watched it as a grown man. He loved that show. <laughs> he thought it was kind of stupid, but he loved to watch it. Well, there's Patty C. Hello, Patty. I thought it was kind of stupid in a way, but it was interesting just to see what they were going to do and what they were going to say. It was crazy. And there's Patty C. Hello, Patty C. Welcome to our chat. What percentage of millennials are Republican? A, 32%. B, 22%. C, 12%. And there's RC Man. <laughs> I think they have new episodes where they're old men now. That, that's kind of neat. I'd like to see one of those. Ashley Chapman, it's A, 32%. I think these are going to be the last two questions. Who sings the song, Baby One More Time? <coughs> Who sings the song, Baby One More Time? Brittany, Ashley Chapman. Way to go, Ashley. How many times do you have to say Beetlejuice for him to appear? A3, B9, C13. Connie Jones with three. Way to go, Connie. Whew, I'm getting tired, y'all. <laughs> I mean, we can still stay on and chat if you want, but I'm going to call it for the trivia. Let's see. April has three. Melissa has 15. Ashley, 32 for Ashley. 
Alfonso has three. Joanne has seven. L Linda Rowe, one. Connie Jones, ten. Sharon Tate, one. Sheila McDaniel, one. So we all know Ashley Chapman is the winner of the trivia tonight. Ashley will be getting the seeds, and I'm pretty sure I've already got her address. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I keep reading these same questions over and over. Y'all are going to memorize the answers to all of them. You're not even going to wait for me to read the whole question before you'll be answering them. <laughs> well, I'm glad you had a good time, Ashley. But we've been on here for almost two and a half hours. Do y'all believe that? <laughs> time fi flies when you're having fun, isn't it? I mean, I stay on here all night. doesn't bother me. But don't forget our birthday party Sunday afternoon. All the birthdays in April we're going to be celebrating on Sunday. And I've got it through StreamYard. So if you want to get up on the screen, if you're one of the birthday people, you can do that. So everybody can see the birthday people. And I hope Gladys will too. She hasn't wanted to get up on screen so far, but maybe we can get her up there on Sunday because it's her birthday. And see, Patty C., you'd be here uh, Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock Central Time. And it'll be a birthday party for you, too, because yours is the 28th. I think I've got three, four names written on the thumbnail of people that I knew that it was their birthday. See, I didn't know it was yours or I'd put your name up there too. I can change it though. Let me write your name down. Patty C. April 28th. Yeah, I can change it and put add your name up there too. Happy birthday early. <laughs> Yeah, Gladys's birthday was today, and then Kai's was yes. When was Kai's? Um, yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, Kai's was yesterday. And I think Sharon Sh Sharon's is this month too. Well, I'm glad you could, you found us, Patty C. So you came in just in time to come in on the birthday party Sunday to help celebrate your birthday. Everybody's got to have a piece of cake or a cupcake or something <laughs> for Sunday when we're live. We're going to have a virtual birthday party. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you found us, Patty. We have fun. I mean, it's my channel is all mostly about gardening and cooking what you grow, stuff like that. But it also covers other entertainment. So, that's why we, we ended up with trivia. We played a couple of nights on all my uh, people liked it. So, we kept playing trivia on Thursday night. I mean, some nights we don't play on Thursday, but most of the time we do play trivia. And there's the vegan menu. Hello, vegan menu. Glad you could stop by. Oh, you love my soup cooking show? <laughs> Somebody left a message on that video to me telling me that I cooked the meat way too long in that soup. <laughs> Go 
figure that. I don't see how I cooked it too long. The more you cook it, the more tender it is, isn't it? The more the flavor of the meat gets in the soup. That's what I figure. And I've heard some people say that I don't know how to cook greens. Well, I know how to cook them the way I cook them. And you can put them in a pot, put a ham bone or something like that in there and cook it that way. Uh, I like mine just sautéed in a pan with a little bit of garlic and, you know, different things on them. Just season them up a little bit because a lot of times I sauté mine in a pan. I don't cook them in a big pot like the old-timey people did. Because I remember my grandmother cooking a big pot of greens. She'd take the greens out and the water that was in it, the soup from the greens, was green. <laughs> and she'd make her cornbread dumplings and drop them in that uh, green soup. And they were good, but I've never been able to make them the way she did. I don't know what she puts in her green and her uh, cornbread dumplings that I don't put in. But one of these days I'll get it figured out. Yeah, and when I cook, I like what I cook. And that's my downfall because I like to eat too. And since I've been doing my cooking videos, I have gained a few pounds. <laughs> I mean, if it's here, you got to eat it, right? <laughs> well, thank you, Snow White. Tauruses are foodies. I didn't know that. I never knew that vegan menu. I am a Taurus. You're a Taurus too? Well, good. My son is a Gemini. He missed being a target, a Taurus. His birthday was the 29th of May, so that made him a Gemini. That is the problem. Don't always like my cooking. Well, see, that's just me. I like to eat. I love food. And everything I cook, I love. <laughs> so I got to eat it. I mean, hey. And Melissa's a Taurus. Hey. So we're going to have a lot of birthdays next month, huh? And Sheila's birthday's in December. Oh, man. Get sleepy, y'all. Time for a good hot shower and go to bed. I can drill my holes tomorrow morning, maybe. Just before I put the, the drill up. Because I've got all my tools still in the bedroom in there. I mean, I got the furniture back. I still got the tools in there. I haven't went through all my paperwork because in there's where I got all the stacks of bills stacked up that I pay each month. And sooner or later when my file gets full and it starts to bulge, <laughs> I'll go in there and clean about half of them out and trash them or burn them and leave the most recent ones in case I need to refer to a, a bill that's already paid. But there's no way you can keep all of them. And I've been getting lax on it. I've been letting it go. So there's a lot of stuff piled in there. I've got to clean it out. Got to clean it out. Who oh, me. You're going to be 29 again? <laughs> the 10th for Sheila. The 10th of December. We got a lot of stubborn people in here. Y'all know that Tauruses are supposed to be stubborn? We're supposed to be stubborn and set in our ways. And that describes me to a T. I am set in my ways and I'm stubborn. <laughs> I stand my ground.
<laughs> vegan menu says we are not. <laughs> oh yes, we are. <laughs> Shelly says hers is December first. Oh me. Has anybody heard about Ann Watson? The last I heard from her, she was back in the hospital, and she was very sick, and I haven't heard from her since. And my name is Sheila. <laughs> We're strong like a bull. Yep, that's the way they describe us. Tar, strong like a bull, set in our ways, and stubborn. Because let's face it, if a bull don't want to move, you ain't going to move him. <laughs> I have two Taurus children. They are very stubborn. <laughs> My son is a Gemini, like I said, because he was born the end of May. Just when it flipped over to being a Gemini. My daughter was born the 21st of January. And she's the new age. She's the Aquarius. The new age people. It's a nickname. <laughs> Yeah, Taurus is maybe stubborn and um, bullheaded, all that good stuff, but they're loyal, too. I mean, if you want a friend, get you a Taurus. <laughs> they're going to be your friend, and they're not going to be beating around the bush about it. They're either your friend or they're not. I'm a Virgo. My ex-husband was a Virgo. He was born in September. Keep your secrets. You'll call Shelly a lot. Oh, and we're moving into a lucky cycle now. Yay, Taurus. Well, hey, I need all the luck I can get. <laughs> I was looking up the signs one time, you know, because sometimes you can go to some of these sites and they'll tell you which sign is compatible with the other sign. But I don't remember what my compatible sign was that went with the Taurus. My first husband was born April 4th. But I don't know offhand what sign it is for April 4th. Won't tell your secrets. <clears throat> Aries, is that what April 4th is? Or the 1st of April? Aries. That's what my first husband was. I don't know if they were supposed to be ca compatible with the Taurus or not. <laughs> Think so. 61, never been married and don't have any kids. I was going to try to look it up. Aries and I am stubborn too. <laughs> C 
compatible with Well, if I'd spell it right. Signs compatible with a Taurus female. <laughs> See what they tell me. <clears throat> it says, in terms of your love compatibility with other Zodiacs, you could get along with the best match with Cancer, Capricorn, or Pisces. Male. And I don't think either one of my husbands was a Cancer, Capricorn, or Pisces. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm not married now. <laughs> I didn't marry one that was compatible with me. What is a Taurus's woman's best match? Well, they say Virgo and Capricorn. Water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Taurus and Virgo both are Earth signs, emphasizing particularly and stability, similar values, and shared interest in security and long-term commitment. So, I mean, I was compatible with my last husband, but we still ended up divorced, so... That doesn't have 100% of the, I mean, it doesn't work 100% of the time. <laughs> Just because you're compatible with a person doesn't mean you're going to stay married to them, I guess. It doesn't say anything about Sagittarius. You can look it up. thing is so slow. Compact with I'm not sure It says Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra. So a Sagittarius perfect match for a woman is Aries and Cancer placements. So those are two of the first ones they, they pick is Aries and Cancer. Huh. Interesting. Quite interesting. I was married to a Cancer for years, April. You're both Aries and you're both stubborn and was married to him for 34 years. Well, I guess if you marry the, the same sign, that's even better then, huh? <laughs> you're both Aries and you got Taurus kids. <laughs> got a bullheaded family. <laughs> oh, it's hot here too.
it's cooled off outside. That's one thing about Texas. It's usually if you step outside, you feel like you're in air conditioning. You come inside and it's hot. <laughs> That's one reason little buddy likes to stay outside because I do so much outside. I'm not in the house constantly all day. So I have not had my air conditioner on yet. And I didn't want to turn it on tonight because it makes so much racket that the camera picks up the sound. So right now it's cooler outside than it is here in the house. It shows here it's 70 degrees right now outside. I bet it's 80 or more inside. But my doctor says I need to sweat, so I guess it's a good thing if I'm sitting here sweating. Sweating off all those toxins and stuff. <laughs> You're married 23 years. I've been married twice, and I was married 10 years each time. Go figure that. That's, you know, seemed like I was on a roll, you know, 10. 10 and 10. Ten and ten, and now, like, <laughs> I don't know. I was divorced in 43. Uh, no, not 43, 83. So I've, I've been single for 41 years. <laughs> That's the reason I say I'm a professional single person. You need to know something about living single as a woman? I guess I'm the person to ask. Sweating's good, Shelly. <laughs> it gets all that bad stuff out of your system. Sweat it out. And since they took the 22 lymph nodes out of my left side, you know, my arm stays puffy. And it's all from the liquid that is trapped in my arm from the lymph no nodes. So my surgeon said that I need to sweat. And when you sweat, it sweats all that out. So it's a good thing. I just wish I could sweat 20 pounds off. Wind's not blowing here, but it's it's cool outside. It feels really good outside. That's the reason I told my son years ago when my AC went out and I didn't have the money to fix it. I could have slept out on the patio if the bugs would have left me alone. <laughs> it was cool out there. It was nice. I could have slept out there all night and not been hot. But it was so hot in the house, you couldn't stand it. And there's Herb and Bucket Homestead. You you must be new. I don't think I've seen that name before. But welcome, Herb and Bucket Homestead. Welcome to my channel. We're bringing all kind of newbies in here tonight. That's a good thing. Yeah, I've been single so long now. I don't know if I could ever get married again. It would take a certain kind of person. Well, I, I've got a fan. But the way my windows are, you can't put them in the window. I mean, I had a frame that I built and put it behind the couch. So I could open that window behind the couch and put the fan in front of the window and pull air in or pull it out. 
think it's out in the shed. I don't even know if it's still out there. Oh my goodness, RC man, low of 47 tonight where you're at. Well, I don't think it's going to get much cooler than it is right now here all night. Because we got so we're pretty warm at night now. And I'm hoping it's going to help my jalapeno and hot peppers come up. They haven't popped out of the ground yet. I think one or two of them, like the Marconi peppers, they came up. But I'm having a problem keeping them alive. And I've got... Um, I think some other kind of pepper came up. I can't remember the name of it right offhand. But my bell pepper's not come up yet. Yeah, I don't know what it's going to be here tomorrow. I keep hoping we're going to get more rain, but... See what they say. It's 71 right now. The low tonight is 54. No, tomorrow night is 54. The high will be 85. And I don't know if it's going to rain or not. Uh, it's only 20% chance of rain, so I doubt we'll get any. I think the best chance of rain we've got is Saturday. We've got 90% chance of rain Saturday. And the temperature is going to drop to 60 with 47 Saturday night. That'll cool things off a little bit. Be right back up in the 80s next week. At least it's not in the hundreds yet. <laughs> Thank goodness. And Bella's Whisper Farmstead. Hello. I don't think I've seen that name pop up in my chat before. That's another newbie. Welcome to my channel. Glad to have you. Got all kind of newbies here tonight. What, what flower are you talking about that smells so good? Your moonflowers look funny. I don't know. What's wrong with your moonflowers that they look funny? Do you give them enough water? Do you give them enough uh, good compost or fertilizer? You know, a moonflower puts roots down to the center of the earth I mean I have never seen a flower put down a root like a moonflower does if you plant it out like I've got mine in the rock garden you go out and pull one of them up I bet it's got a four or five foot root straight down because it goes after water I guess that's why they live so well here where it's so dry Yeah, it could have something to do with the coal. But they still should be okay. I mean, I'm sorry to hear that, Patty C. She lost her husband last year. Moonflower dance. I don't know how to do the moonflower dance. <laughs>
I'm going to see what happens. Yeah, they should be okay. Maybe, maybe just give them some more time for the weather to warm up a little more. And maybe they'll do better. I may need some Linda seeds. <laughs> well, I have some more moonflower seeds. Yeah, you don't get many in a pack. You don't get many of any of those seeds in a pack. But I tell you, once you get them started, you'll have all the seeds you'll ever want. Well, hi, Lisa E. Glad to have you back. Yeah, I'm doing well. Busy in the garden as always, but other than that, I'm doing great. Had to do repairs on my floor. It's a fabulous night for a moonflower dance. Well, like I said, it helps my arthritis because my hands, my joints haven't been quite as stiff since the weather's warmed up. Let's do it, April. <laughs> the moonflower dance. I don't know what the moonflower dance would be. Good, I'm sorry. I missed a lot in your videos. I'm going to try and catch up. <laughs> Tuesday night is a full moon. Yeah, arthritis don't like the cold and it doesn't like the humidity. That just makes it worse. Wonderful night for a moon dance. April keeps hinting around that she wants to see a moon dance. And I don't know what that would be. Oh, big. We only had like a 15% chance of rain about mid-afternoon. 
And it got cloudy looking, but we didn't get any rain. Not even a little drop. Linda, did you like the tater video? I don't know. Maybe I haven't watched that. <laughs> I think I know where they're at. They're probably at their own homes asleep in their own beds right now. As early as my son has to get up and drive for two hours to get to work, more than likely he's in the bed sleeping right now. And my daughter's probably in bed too or thinking about going. Oh, I haven't had time to watch it yet, Shelly. But I will. Bella's Whisper Farmstead. got all these new people in here tonight. I'm loving it. Oh, wow. We've got severe storms. Storms coming our way tonight here in Tennessee. My brother is in Tennessee now. Mountain City. Is that anywhere close to you, Lisa? I don't know who sings that. I've never heard it, I don't think. I don't know who sings that song. I don't I don't know that I've ever heard it. Your dad is in Paris, Tennessee. Well, my brother moved up there with his wife a year or so ago. Because that's where she was from, Mountain City, Tennessee. And she passed away last year, but he still lives there. Her family's still there, what she's got left of her family. And I don't know if he'll end up moving away or moving back to our hometown or if he'll just stay where he's at. I have no idea. You're close to Tennessee. I'm in Paris, Tennessee. Okay. And April's still outside with her dog. <laughs> I have a blanket over my legs. <laughs> oh. Yeah, in that video that I post tomorrow, there might be one or two places where I say, come on, you know, and you'll probably wonder, well, who's she talking to? I'm talking to my camera. Because part of the time, I couldn't even see the screen. I couldn't tell what it was even showing. I had to get over in the shade to be able to see the screen to see what I was focused on. <laughs> and I was fussing. I was like, come on, come on. <laughs> But, and I didn't delete it out. I said, I'm going to let y'all wonder what that was all about. <laughs> Be a little mean to me. Well, y'all, we've been on here three hours. <coughs> <coughs> And I must say, I'm enjoying myself, but I know probably some of you have other things to do. Some of you may even want to go to bed. I, I've got to go take a shower before I do anything. Oh, I've done so much in my garden, and there's so much more I still want to do. I got the stakes out today to uh, stake back up my bearded iris because they're falling over. That's something I'm going to try to get done tomorrow. 
And I've got plants that I'm, I need to work with tomorrow. So I've got a lot on my plate for tomorrow. So I need to go ahead and get those uh, holes drilled for those two screws to go in that um, vent cover and get those screwed down so I can get all that stuff back out in the shed tomorrow. Get my drill and all that, all my tools put back up. That way it'll leave me free and clear to get out and do what I got to do outside tomorrow. Plus, I got to do some laundry too. I got a lot of dirty clothes in there. Need to change the sheets on my bed. I want to wash my bedspread, but I've been putting that off because I want to hang it out on the line to dry. And right now, there's so much stuff falling out of the trees. It'll just fill that crocheted bed spread up. So I've been putting it off. Your mom named, named you after the Rose of Sharon. I saw that you were growing some. I may grow. Yeah, I'm anxious to see them, how they turn out here too. Because I've never grown them before. This will be my first year for the Rose of Sharon. You love Rosa Sharon Shelley? <laughs> well, I'm anxious to see if those last little flower things I put in that planter box. You know, I took one tier of that planter box and I put them in it. And I can't remember the name of it. And one of my viewers messaged me in a comment to show me how to pronounce the name of it. <laughs> <coughs> but for the life of me, I can't think of even how it's spelled right now. But it was kind of a tongue twister to me. But they look like roses in the picture, but they're not roses. And they're cut and come flowers, so you can cut, cut them for a bouquet. And they come back, you know, they'll keep producing flowers. Kind of like the marigolds and the zinnias and those types of flowers. And I put some in the rock garden too, but if, if we don't get enough rain, we may they may not come up. I might have better put them all in a flower box or something so I could keep them uh, watered better. Oh no, April spilled her smoothie in the grass. How sad. Dang it. It was chocolate banana. Oh my God, April. That would have been so good. <laughs> I love chocolate and I love bananas, so chocolate banana smoothie would go so good right now. Mmm. Well, we got to go, y'all. Y'all got things to do. You got bed to go to. April's got things to do, I'm sure. And definitely it's past my bedtime, but usually I don't have a bedtime. I just go to bed whenever I feel like going most of the time. Well, dude, try, try to go some, grow some of those rows of Sharon's. My rows of Sharon comes back even with snow on the ground. They're gorgeous. Well, that's good to know. I hope they come back here. Yeah, I'm going to say good night, everybody. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate all the new people coming in. You don't know how much I appreciate all of you. Uh, we'll see you on my next video. I'll be posting one tomorrow morning. Uh, check that one out. Check all the videos that I post between now and Sunday. And if you're a free Sunday afternoon around 3 o'clock Central Time, join us for the virtual April birthday party. All the people that have birthdays in April. But it's open for everybody. Every, we want everybody to come to the party, not just, not just the April birthdays. I may have said that wrong. <laughs> it's The party's for everybody to come help celebrate the birthdays for April. Put it that way. 
That may sound better. So, without further ado, I'm going to wish y'all a good night. Love all of you. Please like, share, subscribe to my videos. Have a blessed evening. Have a blessed day tomorrow. And I'll see y'all my next one. Bye, y'all.